All right, well, what can you do? Uh, again, I want to start more broadly um, of principles that you can, and, you know, that are behind what we can do. But I want to get down to eventually practical things, steps that you can take. I want to give you a to-do list, basically, to add to your, um, to your uh, list of things that you have to do. Your other chores you have at home, you can add this list as well. In your free time, and all, all that extra free time you have. Well, what we need to do is we need to call, in principle, our magistrates to keep their oath to defend the U.S. and Tennessee constitutions. All our magistrates in the state of Tennessee, as far as I know, at all levels, I believe, even down to the county commission, have, been, have sworn an oath. They have vowed to uphold the United States Constitution and the Tennessee Constitution. And the information that I gave you earlier tells you what those documents say, and they need to be called to keep their vow. Their duty is to uphold the U.S. and the Tennessee Constitution, not the will of five Supreme Court justices. The will of these five Supreme Court justices is contrary to those two constitutions, and so they're to uphold the Constitution, not the will of these members of the Supreme Court. And they should also be called to keep their oath by interposition. Um, we're going to call them to interpose between us and the Supreme Court, as we've been speaking of. Another thing is we want to tell them, make no changes to Tennessee law. Don't adjust to this ruling at all. We do not want them to make any, any, any law that comes down and says, well, we've got to adjust the Supreme Court's rule. We need to change our laws. Fight vehemently against that. Do not let them legalize same-sex marriage in Tennessee. Right now, it's illegal. We don't want them to legalize it. So resist any attempts to change Tennessee law and make it conform to the Supreme Court's lawless judgment. This is, gets tougher. Encourage county clerks to obey Tennessee law. Right now, there's nobody that I know of in the state that has risen up and said, I'm willing to obey Tennessee law rather than the Supreme Court. Right now, they're all obeying the Supreme Court, as far as I know. None of them have said... I'm going to obey the Tennessee law, which is actually the jurisdiction they are under. They're not under federal jurisdiction. They're under the state jurisdiction. The Tennessee Constitution, Article 7, Section 1, says this. Qualified voters of each county shall elect for terms of four years a legislative body, a county executive, a sheriff, a trustee, a register, a county clerk, and an assessor of property. Their qualifications and duties shall be prescribed by the General Assembly, not by the federal government, not by the Supreme Court, but by the General Assembly. Any officer shall be removed for, for malfeasance or neglect, or neglect of duty as prescribed by the General Assembly. So they're under Tennessee's um, Constitution. They're, they're answerable to the legislature. And the legislature has made no law. I know currently they're disobeying that law and signing same-sex marriage licenses but we can encourage them and help them to see that that's illegal. That what they're doing, it makes them in danger of, of suit. And related to this, if a magistrate does stand, if a county clerk does stand, we should encourage sheriffs to defend them. Local sheriffs to stand with those county clerks if the federal marshals come. When the federal marshals arrive, again, like I said, this could get really interesting. But if the federal marshals do come, we want to tell the sheriffs, too, that the federal marshals have no jurisdiction over this clerk. He's acting in accord with Tennessee state law. And if you arrest him, we're going to charge you with kidnapping. <laughs> well, that'll be interesting, right? But uh, I don't know what will happen. But the sheriff can defend the county clerk from arrest. And so we want to encourage that. If a faithful clerk rises up and says, you know, I, I need to obey Tennessee law and I need to obey my conscience too and follow God rather than men, then we need to support him and ask the sheriffs to support him. This is just a note. I'm not telling anyone to do this, but I'm just letting you know this. And I don't think actually, I do not think this is the time for this action, but it may become a time for the action. County clerks that disregard Tennessee law can be removed by ouster. Okay. And what that means, citizens may file ouster proceedings. Ten citizens and freeholders are required to institute the proceedings 
and they must post security for the costs of the lawsuit. And there's the legal stuff there for you. It's the duty of the county attorney, upon request of relator citizens of freeholders, to aid and assist in the prosecution of the proceedings against county officers. So, if it comes down to it, and the Tennessee clerk says, I'm going to obey, county clerk says, I'm going to obey the Supreme Court rather than Tennessee state law, there is a way to remove them and replace them with someone who will obey Tennessee state law. I'm not saying to do that yet. I think we need to wait, honestly. So that's not my recommendation, but I want you to have that in your mind. Um, at some point, that might be something that needs to be done. But right now, I would say the thing to do is to try to get to the state house to defend us. And if the state house defends us, then and the, these clerks have the backing of the state house, I think they're more likely to stand. And then the state house can deal with them. And we'll talk a little bit about how that can take place. Tennessee should also appeal to Congress. We should call our the state of Tennessee, not individually, appeal to Congress, the U.S. Congress, to correct the Supreme Court's usurpation of power. Um, this, is, this is different from what a lot of people are saying we should do. Um, some people are saying we need a, an amendment to the Constitution, and I, I, I don't think we need to do that. I think it's probably not going to happen practically, but that's no reason not to do something, by the way. <laughs> Lots of things won't practically happen that God can do. But I'm saying it, it's already been tried. It's not been unsuccessful. And honestly, we shouldn't admit that the Supreme Court's interpretation is right and that we need to change the document. The document's fine. It doesn't need to be amended. The U.S. Constitution is fine, in this regard at least. It doesn't grant this power to them. We don't need to tell them it doesn't. So this is a different opportunity, and I think it was more doable as well. In, US, in the Constitution of the United States, Article 3, Section 2, Paragraph 2, says this. In all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, and those in which a state shall be party, the Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction. Okay. In all other cases before mentioned, there's a whole list of them, the Supreme Court shall have appellate jurisdiction, both as to law and fact. Now listen to this phrase, and this is the important one. With such exceptions and under such regulations as the Congress shall make. Congress has the authority and the ability to say, you cannot hear this case. They can regulate the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and tell them, you can't hear this. It's outside of your jurisdiction. Now, they can't technically, they can't hear this case already. But Congress can enforce it and say, no, you are not allowed to hear this case. They can make exceptions and regulations to what the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court has done. Now, this is an interesting thing. This, this has been appealed to repeatedly, and bills have been introduced in Congress repeatedly to try to limit the court's jurisdiction with regard to abortion. It's failed, even with Republicans, over and over and over again, surprisingly. And to say the Supreme Court can't rule on abortion, and then that will free the states to do whatever they want to do. Actually, I think they have that freedom, but we'll get, we know, you know if you've been listening that that's the case, but... But anyway, this is a way we can rein in the Supreme Court by calling Congress to limit their jurisdiction in accord with their rights and powers given in the Constitution in Article 3, Section 2, Paragraph 2. Now, will Congress do it? Well, I'll tell you this. They definitely will not do it if we don't ask them. But if we ask them, who knows? If the Tennessee State Legislature says you need to rein in the Supreme Court, it may be a way of keeping peace. It may be the way that we will be able to keep peace. Lesser magistrate interposes and says, Congress, stop the Supreme Court. And again, you have another act of interposition. Interposition between the State House and the Supreme Court, and then interposition of the Congress with the Supreme Court. We can ask both to interpose. And that could keep peace and preserve liberty at the same time. But who knows what the Lord might do. And I believe that's a better option to dealing with the Supreme Court than the amendment to the Constitution. That's just a personal opinion. But you can think through those things yourself and decide what we ought to do. Yes, sir. Did that uh, the Congress limited their appellate uh, jurisdiction? Would that apply to a past decision or only future? Only future, which means they can't hear another case on that subject. Which means the states can do what they want, and they can. And the Supreme Court can't hear the case on appeal. So the you know. Whatever Tennessee does about abortion after that, say they limited abortion. I said, you don't have jurisdiction over abortion. Tennessee could outlaw abortion, 
And people could appeal it all the way up to the state Supreme Court. But once they get there, they're done. The Supreme Court can't hear the case. So that is a, a power that has not yet been used. And I think we should encourage our magistrates, our Tennessee magistrates, to call the um, call Congress to do this. All right, now, I have some practical to-do lists here, some action lists. First of all, I would encourage you, if you don't mind getting our email, I don't even know if we're going to have any email, honestly. This is, we're just making all this up as we go along. So I don't know if you'll ever get an email from me. But, uh, <laughs> if you would sign up our email list, I'll try, I'm not a community organizer. Like our president. And uh, so I'm not good at that stuff at all. I'm hoping that someone will step up and be able to organize these things and keep you informed. But I think it's going to be important for you to stay informed about what's happening, about all the different things going on with this as it develops. Um, so we will do the best. I, if you get on that list, I will do the best I can, which may not be very good, but the best I can to keep you informed about things that are coming up. Um, there are going to be county commission meetings. There are going to be commissioners you need to call and commend, and we're going to encourage you to do that. There are going to be commissioners you need to call and encourage and motivate. Um, if it gets past the county level, you'll need to contact your representatives at the state house, and you'll need to know when committee meetings happen. And you may need to be one of the 10,000 that shows up at Petronius's door and says, interpose for us. Interpose. And we may need to have 10,000 at the state house interposing in a committee just to get this bill out of a committee. Possible. So we'll try to keep you abreast the best we can. And then you can use your networks to tell other people and get them motivated to come. Whoever those people are that you know, you can move and, and spread the word quickly from this email, and, and then eventually we can unite and show up at the, um, wherever we need to be, whether it be a commission meeting or a representatives or state house. Um, here is their information. I didn't have this on any of the handouts, so if you want this, you may need to write it down. If you, if you don't have a pencil and paper, you can just go to the Senate and look up their names or go to the General Assembly website, Tennessee General Assembly website, and look up their names. But ask them, first of all, call them, contact them, and encourage them. Um, say, yeah, thank you for um, taking this stand. And uh, could you keep me informed? Can you put me on your email list? Can you tell me? Um, I want to know what's going on, and I want to help. And they are glad to hear that. Uh, when I called and said that, they were just all excited, ready to talk to me. Said, really? Okay, yeah. Somebody's interested. So they don't get all, you know, I was talking to one of the guys who's involved with this, and he said, he was asking one of the representatives, what's a busy day for you, like where people are really getting up excited about something? He says, we get five or ten calls. If we get five or ten calls, that's a big deal. So we have no idea what that, that means to get the call and say, I'm with you, and if, or I'm against you, um, and you need to stop. That, too, makes them nervous. So feel free to contact them. Well, what can you do at the county level? So that's just getting started, which means stay informed, try to get as much information and stay in the loop about this so you can be active. At the county level, um, first of all, there's a sheet. This is where your sheets become important. On that first sheet that I gave you, there is how to determine your representative. If you don't know who your representatives are, you can go to that and uh, that sheet, and it tells you step-by-step step how to find out what district you're in and all those details. Um, if you don't know your district, you can look at your voter ID card, but if you don't know where it is and you lost it years ago, you can uh, put in your information there at that first website, and it'll tell you all your information. Print it off. And then if you, you can go and find your district number um, by going to the various county websites there. You've got all of them listed. Washington, Sullivan, Carter, Unicoi, Green, Hawkins, and Johnson. Sorry if we missed you there. But go to your county website, find out who your commissioner is, and then you can be ready to contact them. Put their, put their phone number and their email in your phone and be ready to call them when necessary. And then also, you can call your county commissioners to set up a meeting or to ask them to support a resolution calling the Tennessee General Assembly to interpose between the Supreme Court and the people of Tennessee. There's all kinds of these resolutions out there. Three counties have already made resolutions calling on the Tennessee General Assembly to stand and interpose uh, Mickman County, um, Johnson Green. County, and Green County have all asked Mickman, 
Also, um, so at the county level, you can encourage them, you can meet with them. I have in your packet, the next page, I believe, a county resolution. This is not in stone or law. Basically, this county resolution brings together everything I've been telling you with a few extras. And the county resolution is calling, is, you can, I can give you, by the way, if you send me your email, I'll give you a digital form of this so you can adapt it to your county. It's, it'll be a Word document, and then you can make any kind of adjustments you want. If there's part of this you don't like, you can take it out, and you can make up your own resolution and give it to the county commission and ask them to do that. Um, if you like it, you can plug in your county name and the date and um, ask them to do these things. Basically, it's doing, asking, you, asking the county commission to do everything we've asked, saying you have constitutional right, you have biblical rights, and a, I say it at the beginning, you know, the first whereas is about biblical law, but it's in a, a Declaration of Independence kind of wording that they couldn't object to, <clears throat> unless they're going to object to the Declaration of Independence. And then um, talks about the unjust ruling, gives you so, some citations from dissenting justices, um, the hypocrisy of the Supreme Court in the U.S. US versus Windsor case. It makes the case that the Constitution is silent on marriage. The federal government has no jurisdiction. The Supreme Court has no jurisdiction. And it recognizes that um, Congress can rein in the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court tell them they don't have authority. And then it calls the Tennessee legislators to keep their oath of office, defend the Constitution, and not defend the will of five members of the Supreme Court. And the final conclusion is in the therefore. And I'll read the therefore for you. You can read along with me. The Board of Commissioners of Blank County, Tennessee, this blank day of December 2015. And we really would like to try to get it done in December. Because if we can get these resolutions sent up to the State House when this bill hits the floor in January, January 12th or 14th, I can't remember. This will hit the floor. And if they are receiving resolutions from counties to do something, that will make that bill more interesting to them. It calls the Tennessee General Assembly and Governor to keep their oaths to uphold the Tennessee Constitution and the Constitution of the United States. One, by refusing to accept the lawless opinion of the United States Supreme Court in Obergefell v. Hodges as a binding precedent for any except the specific plaintiffs in that case. And two, by continuing to uphold the Tennessee State Constitution, which says, and then there's the quote, the historical institution and legal contract solemnizing the relationship of one man and one woman shall be the only legally recognized marital contract in the state. And three, by pledging legal and political assistance to anyone who refuses to follow Obergefell for constitutionally protected reasons, and how that's going to look, I'm not sure, but it's asking them to do everything they can to protect these clerks that are faithful. And then four, by appealing to the United States Congress to correct the Supreme Court's usurpation of power by telling the Supreme Court that it does not have appellate jurisdiction in cases regarding the definition of marriage in accord with their powers delegated Article 3, Section 2, Paragraph 2 of the U.S. Constitution. So it's sort of a summary of everything I've been presenting to you. And you can adjust it. I'll send you a digital copy. But I would encourage you to go to your uh, commissioners and ask them to do it. I've gone to my commissioner, and um, we not, we've not gotten too far right now. Um, I know some men, a man who's taken it to the commissioners of Hawkins County, and they've been very, he's been very active in Hawkins County, trying to rally the churches, um, to do this because that is really important that pastors you get pastors to come and meet with commissioners if they can and I will say this they are scared they're terrified um, they know who they're dealing with the, the homosexuals are not friendly ultimately when it comes to transgressing their law blaspheming their law in the United States we have blasphemy laws and if you speak against homosexuality, you are in great danger. And they know that. And these men are bullies, and women are bullies. And um, they're in need of God's grace. The Lord can bring them to repentance, and we desire the repentance of homosexuals everywhere. That they would turn to Christ, just like we desire the repentance of adulterers, and murderers, and thieves. We desire their repentance. But they're scared because of the bullying that they know may face them if they stand firm. Which means... If they're not going to be able to stand on principle, they need to know that there's an army backing them. They need the 10,000. They need the 10,000 to come to their commission meeting and say, we're with you. 
Stand firm. Be brave. Be courageous. We're with you. You're not, you, you may get kicked out of office one day, but it's not going to be over this issue. And there is a large amount of support in Tennessee for this. 81% of the people of Tennessee <clears throat> voted for that marriage amendment. That's a large percentage of the people. And once they start to hear these things, there may even be a higher number that begin to support it. When people realize, you mean we can do something? We can act? So pray for these county commissioners. Meet with them. Um, encourage them to stand firm. Uh, but it's going to take courage. What Petronius did was amazing, really. That a governor would say, you know, a pagan governor would say, I'm going to stand with you people because what you're saying is right. To defend your laws, to defend the laws of your God is the right thing to do. So I'm going to stand with you. So encourage them and take that sample resolution or write your own or look at the others online. Whatever you can do. If you know a commissioner, if you have a friendship with a commissioner, and honestly, long term, think long term. We don't want to offend these people. Don't go there and be mean to them. So you got to do this or I'm going to get you kicked out of office. Uh, we want to make friends because this is a long haul thing and that's why I think we need to work locally. We need to build relationships with these commissioners so that we have friends there and the good righteousness can prevail against land. Justice can be done. Um, so try not to offend if you can. Try to go as a friend, as a helper and sympathize with them realizing they could lose a lot by standing for this. And so encourage them, but help them. Steve, did you say that this proposed state bill has been assigned a number? And if so, do you, do you have that number? I do, and I will get to that. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't, I'm keeping you in suspense. Is what I'm doing. Yes, you are. Just waiting to the, it's part of the suspense. Well, we'll get to the state level, we'll do that. And another thing that you can do in your packet, the next one, is a statement calling for constitutional resistance to Obergefell versus Hodges. Now, this is going to help you, I hope, convince your commissioners that this is not a bunch of wide-eyed, hillbilly Tennesseans who are doing this thing. And y'all are a bunch of lunatics or tea partiers or something, and you got you drank too much of that funny juice over there in McMinn County or something. And, and this, this document is a statement calling for constitutional resisti resistance to Obergefell versus Hodges. And I didn't include all the signatures because it would have been very long. Um, but 70 plus constitutional attorneys and scholars from universities all over the United States have said this is what the states need to do. Two of my um, action steps for the county commission were drawn directly from this document. Maybe three, actually. Three, maybe three of those four action steps that you're calling the, the Tennessee legislature to do are also called for by this document. And so th this is constitutional attorneys saying this is legal, we're not doing anything wrong, this is legitimate, and this is the right thing to do when the Supreme Court usurps their authority and gets into areas they don't have any jurisdiction over. And so you can use that to show the people as you give them the document, give them this one, send them to the website, say look at all the signatures, um, this is legitimate, and try to persuade them with that. And then if you can... Find a champion on your county commission to be the Petronius for you. Find a Petronius who is willing to champion this at the commission and take the risks and realize that this is important enough to do. And if these county resolutions are passed and they start to swirl into the Tennessee state legislature, then it will motivate the legislature to deal with this bill, which I'm about to give you the number of. And then you can see that. What can you do at the state level? Well, you can ask your Tennessee state representative to co-sponsor HB 1412. The final page is there in your, um, in your, in your packet, in your state, you know, your papers. Now, I will say something about this bill. Um, it's probably not perfected yet. It may be amended. Um, there, is, there are some parts of it that are being questioned and challenged already by other fellow Christians and faithful folks, and they're trying to work it out. So pray for them. Pray that these men in the state house would be of one mind and come together on this bill and be united in house to be written. I can't help really with that. You know, we can't, There's not much you and I can do about letting them work out the details of the bill. I'm not really necessarily even asking you to support a specific legisl legislation. I'm just saying... it. The principle in it is right. I don't know if all the details are right. 
I, I just don't know. Some things maybe look a little questionable about the bill. But the principle is right. They need to stand between us and the Supreme Court and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Tennessee. So in principle, I think the bill is right. And I think everybody, that I, the Christians up there, are in agreement on that. They're just questioning the details of how it's written, and it's gotten a little heated up there. So pray for unity among these men. They're all godly, faithful men and women, and uh, that they would stand firm. But encourage your, your representative, your Tennessee state representative, and again, if you don't know who they are, use that first sheet to find out who they are. Contact them. I will say this, uh, Representative um, Bud Holsey, who is our representative here in Kingsport, at least over my neighborhood, he's my representative, he has co-sponsored the bill. So that was good news. I thank the Lord for that. He's decided to co-sponsor the bill. But find out if your representative, your state representative, is willing to co-sponsor the bill. And again, not just support it. Ask them, will you co-sponsor it? Will you step out there and co-sponsor it? Because the more co-sponsors it gets, if it has 60 co-sponsors, it will come out of committee a lot faster and get onto the floor. Is your Senate bill yet? Yes. There is a, a Senate bill as well. There's not a lot of action on it. Uh, Tennessee State Senator May Beaver has SB 1437. There's not a lot going on with this. Honestly, you know what I think is happening? I don't understand politics completely, but I think the Senate's sitting back and waiting to see what happens in the House. Uh, they don't want to put their neck out there yet, and they're going to wait and see how it goes in the House. The Really, the battlefield, from what I'm hearing from the representatives up there, is in the House. If it passes in the House, it has a very good chance of passing in the Senate. That's what they're saying. But the House is going to be the issue. And Steve, did you say that there's a proposed date in January when it's going to uh, be talked about in committee? It's first reading. First reading. It has its first reading. It's either the 12th of January or the 14th. I can't remember. But it's in mid-January. And again, we'll try to keep you up on that. That prob- That's mainly just a formality. It will be read and then it will be assigned to a committee. Uh, there won't be a lot going on that day except the reading and the assignment probably. And then after that, at the committee, eventually they can try to kill it at any point. They can try to kill it in the committee, and they probably will because they don't want to do this. But again, if the 10,000 show up at the committee and that committee room is packed wall to wall with people, even if you all just came, this many people showing up in that committee meeting and filling that room, would that would have a big impact um, and saying, you need to get this out of committee. We're behind this. Dave, is, uh, I know that uh, David Fowler at the uh, Family Action Council of Tennessee has been talking about helping to work on a bill. Is this the same bill? Do you know? He has been involved with this bill, um, and he's been. And he there's there is some debate and dissension with him and others over this bill. And I'll give you. I talked to him last night, uh, David Fowler, about this, and because I wanted to get his opinion, he had written on his blog about this and some of his criticisms of the bill, and. I understand that, yeah, I think there could be problems with the bill. And part of the problem with the bill may be that they really, that, well, here's what the main objection. I'll give you the main objection. In the bill on that last page, it says, uh, at least the main objection he told me, um, the attorney general and reporter shall defend any state or local government official for any lawsuit from any lawsuit regarding the official's recognition of natural marriage as defined by the section. Okay. So they're calling on the Attorney General to do something. <clears throat> Truthfully, according to David Fowler's understanding of the Constitution, the Attorney General doesn't have to do anything they say. He can completely disregard their... Uh, what it's worth. Their, it's not a command, but they can, they can ask him to do this. They can give him authority to do it. But he can say no. Because he's in a separate part of the government. He's, a ju- he's in the judicial branch of the government. And so that's the thing that scares them, it scares David, that these clerks are not going to be protected. And I don't know what, what can be done about that. I'm not a constitutional attorney or anything close to that. But uh, I think that's a small thing that could be fixed, but they're going to have to work it out. Again, I can't tell them how to fix it. It seems like they could just say, Tennessee General Assembly pledges within all their power, every, every bit of ability they have, they will defend you clerks with, to the best of their ability. I don't know how, this is really a unique situation. When you tell the Supreme Court, you can't do this here, what's the, the, how it's going to pan out, I don't know if anybody can really predict what's going to happen. Are they going to go and arrest every clerk in Tennessee who does this? Are they going to bring lawsuit against the Tennessee General Assembly? I don't know. 
I have no idea what will work. So that's the concern. But in principle, David is in agreement with the bill. He's, has, in principle, he's in agreement with these men, but he's concerned for the clerks. But yes, some, sir. Some might step out because of their faith. Yeah. If they feel they're really protected by the legislature. Yeah. If the, the, the legislature's word of protection may be enough for some, yeah. even though they can't quote command the the attorney general. I don't know the process for removing the attorney general, but that is another option. Um, I don't know what the process for that. He's appointed by the governor. So, yes, sir. He's appointed by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court. That doesn't make any part of the judicial branch. He's a prosecutor, and they've solved the problem. Right now. Maybe I'll just look at it simply. I was in government for 20 years and it says shall. And the, the word in government language, shall, leaves him no option. No option. He, has to, he has to defend it. He may not want to, but he can be impeached. That's the way he can be impeached. So he can be impeached. Again, I could get, we could get bogged down all the legal detail, details of the bill, and I really am not the one to speak to it. But in principle, I think all the Christians that I've spoken to up there are in agreement. David Fowler, in principle, agrees with it. They're just questioning whether or not this is the best bill. Could the bill be improved? And I'm not, I'm not going to say it couldn't be. But that's what we have right now. And I think in principle it's worth supporting and calling our representatives to support it. And if it's amended, like all bills can be amended, to be improved, hey, that'd be great. I hope so. Make it stronger. Make it better. And then also, what can you do at the state level? Be ready to make calls. Even visit Nashville when the time comes. Like I said, if all the people in this room showed up at that committee meeting, that would be that would overwhelm them, I think. They're like, what are we going to do with these people? They all want this bill. It needs to come out of committee. So if the 10,000 show up at the state house, who knows what will happen. And I want to conclude with this because we've talked a lot about politics, but I want to, this is a check for me, it's a check for you. Do not put your confidence in princes. Put no confidence in these men. I'm glad there's courageous men and women standing up for this. Um, but don't put your trust in them. Um, and Psalm 146 says this. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth, and that very day his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. So don't trust in princes. Don't trust in representatives, presidents, governors. We should engage with them. We should call them to faithfulness and obedience. But ultimately our faith has to be in God to change their hearts, to change our hearts, to change the hearts of the people of Tennessee and put courage in these people, in us and in them, to stand against tyranny in our day. Oh Lord, we call upon you because you are the one who's made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in it. You're the one who keeps truth and justice forever. You're the one who executes justice for those who are oppressed, those who are tyrannized over. And so we beg you, Lord, to execute justice on behalf of the people of Tennessee that you would move the hearts of legislators, governors, commissioners, and your people in every place. Move the hearts of your people to stand for righteousness, to defend your institution of marriage. More importantly, we pray that you would defend your institution of marriage, that you would arise and that you would scatter your enemies, that they would melt before you as wax before the fire, and that you would be exalted, Lord Jesus, in this state. And that here in Kingsport, Tennessee, and in every surrounding county, and even in the State House, you would be acknowledged as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen.